Holy crap, we've got a lot of stuff going on. Okay. So it looks like some of these emails have become out of order since the update. There's this Shenzhen Days. Hey, y'all, 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 y'all. <laughs> Take for a totally random example. Shenzhen. How do you say it? What's the Z doing in there? Can you just ignore the H? Spoiler warning, you can't. So let me give you in a short circuit. She Sen... Sen Zhen. Sen Zhen. That's not what I've been saying. So, whoops. You know, like you're talking to your best friend. Jen! And, well, you're probably closer than you were before. How's that for confidence? I am in the process of setting up closer tie ups with global firms and am working to secure higher profile work for our company. The first result of these efforts is a contract to create an infrared sensor. Charmander? Eh, uh, there's Charmander. <laughs> this allows us to participate in the booming market for passive monitoring stations to detect illegal activities, illegal carbon emissions, illegal growing operations, illegal immigration. If it's against the law and generates heat, we'll detect it. Lily Wu. I feel like something's gonna go... I'm gonna start creating stuff that really I shouldn't be at some point in this. I don't know, something... Something seems off in the world of Shen... Shen... Whatever. Just Ch China. RTC is a simple input connected to a DT2415 clock, providing you the current time. Sensor is a simple input connected to an infrared sensor. Alarm is a simple output connected to a silent alarm. The alarm should only be turned on whenever the sensor reads at or above a value of 20, but only between the specified on and off times. The on and off times are set by the operator using switches that can be read as X bus inputs and use numerical value values compatible with the DT2415. So he's going to set that. Okay, and this is just going to be giving us a clock. Okay, and if sensor is sensing, uh, we need it to be above 20. Okay, so if this is going to be a P0. Um, why do you have two outputs on your clock? Is that one to maybe turn you off? I never look from in my instruction manual for an RTC. Okay, this is just NC not connected, so that, that's whatever. Uh, so this is a simple input, so I think to P0, and looking at it, uh, every 15 minutes it increases from 0 to 95. So then we're going to have these two coming in. I'm just going to run these around here so I don't have to bother with bridges. Bridges cost literally nothing, but whatever. Um, although, I think I'm going to have to use a bridge here. Because I'm going to need something that I can at least output from. So I'm going to do a bridge over there. Like that. So I think that should be connected there. Then we're going to need to interface this through here, and then out through here. Turn on the alarm. And then, then we've got to write some actual code. Okay, I think I have this one nailed here. It's been a little bit of a while. <laughs> it's a new day in China. But, what we are doing is we are sleeping one on this one. Uh, I just put the sleep in first because reasons. Uh, we are testing if P1, so that's the clock here, is equal or is greater than the on time. So that would be between 90, that would be either 94 or 95, in which case it is true. Um, if, it, if, if it is true, then the alarm should have been turned on. Or it should be ready to alarm. Or if it's equal to, because this is the on time, there's no test for and equal to or test greater or equal to function so we have to do another equals to in here to get it to work uh, we're then if it fails um the equals to is if it fails as well because if it's if it does test greater than and it's and uh it's true then we don't want it to run the test equals to because then it'd be false and then it wouldn't work it's then doing a test less than the off time if uh the 
greater than fails. So if it's too late, um, so say if it's cycled from 95 background to zero for the next day, the alarm should still be on. So if uh, it fails for the late test, it will, it will do the early test. And again, if that fails, it will test for a uh, equals version of it. If by the end of all this, it is true, so if the first one is true, then it's just going to skip right down to here. Or if any one of these become true, then it's going to skip right down to here. It's going to move 19, the 19 is important, I'll get to that in a second, to X3. Okay, if it's false, it's going to move 100 to X3, the 100 is also important. If we follow to X3, uh, we are going to see that this is sleeping until it gets input on X1, which is where that X3 is connected to. At which point it's going to test greater than uh, P0, so the, uh, the sensor is greater than X1. That's the reason why we're doing 19. If we don't have a test which involves X1 after it's waited for an X1 um, signal to come in, it freaks out and it starts just cycling and using up loads of power and just clogging, clogging up the whole thing. So we have to use X1 in a test. So I'm using it as my variable for the actual sensor, which is a bit cheaty, but it works. We are then, uh, if this is true, then we know that the alarm should be sounding. If it's false, then the alarm should not be sounding. I've put in a NOP here. Um, NOP is just basically no instruction. It was just to get these to have the same amount of instructions. Now they don't, so it's not really necessary, but we're going to keep it for legacy sake. I like it. It's fun. NOP! <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, um, so yeah, if it's 100, so if it ever moves 100 into here, it will still test this because it's still taking in this data. It has to always take in this data, as far as I can tell, but the sensor will never be greater than 100, so it will never s alarm if uh, the time is, is off. So it should work here if we simulate it. That's all working. Oh, it's failed here and here. Oh, no, for real? I suppose I can simulate up until this part here. So why does this fail? And where does this fail? If we, I wish there was a way to, to scroll through after you've did it. Step through everything that's happened after it's, ha after it's happened, like a rewind function almost. That'd be really nice, unless you can, no. You can set breakpoints, I think. Uh, yeah, control click to toggle a breakpoint. We keep stepping here. I don't know when it fails. Okay, I think we've just had our failure. It's not registered yet because it's not cycled through to the next second. But we are getting a hundred coming on on there. So what happened was this moved 19 into here. And the sensor is greater than the value 19. However... It should have failed because... Why should that have failed? Value 25 is coming in. Value 44. Oh, the on time and off time changes? For real? Oh, you son of a... Well, I didn't bloody know that. So right now I guess we're in off time until we get to 48, in which time we're in on time again. So that's when this is triggering again. Uh, fun fact, though. I can actually move these. That would have been super useful to know, but I got my wires laid down now. Brainwave! We know that this is going to constantly increase from whatever value it starts off at to 95, then back down to zero, then all the way, all the way back up to 95 again. So, we know that if it ever hits on time, we need it to turn on. If it ever hits off time, we need it to turn off. So what we're going to do is get rid of all that. We are going to test equal... Uh, you know what, we can actually comment this as well, I've been reading through the manual. So, turn on. Um, or off. Maybe. Maybe. Hashtag maybe. Anyway. Um, so if we go test equals um, P1 if it's equal to X0 
Then we want to move 100 into... We can move it into the data registry, that's fine. Um, if then test equals... Or in fact, we need to put this in a plus. Like so. If test equals P1 against X1, then we know that it should be off. So we're going to move 0 into the data registry at which point it should be turned off. Okay, then we can send information across through X3 to know that we are in alarm time. So if we're going to do test uh, equals uh, data 100, if that's true, then X3 should be 19, or we're going to move um, X3 19, or 19x3 even, blah blah blah, 19x3. If it's false, then we're going to move 100 to x3, and just kind of, we'll still use our x3 as the variable here. That should work? Maybe? Part not sleeping. Alright, that's fine. I can fix that. Sleep one. Good so far. Good so far. Boom! Okay, we can bring that production cost way down, probably by using smaller chips. Lines of code we can bring down a little bit. Maybe the comments count as lines of code, I don't know. Power usage is pretty good, though. That's the average. Sweet. Finally. Just letting you know that your design for the infrared sensor component was well received by our partners. Thank God I slaved over that. And is set to be integrated into a number of products currently under development by various defense and security firms. Obviously, our performance here opens the door to more jobs of this nature. So thank you for contributing to Long Teng's future. Lily Wu. Hang on, we're becoming a defense supplier. It would seem that way, wouldn't it, Carl? Virtual Reality Buzzer. Hi all, apologies for the personal side here. But I've met this wonderful girl named... Xiaomi. And, well, to make a long story short, she's set to move in with me next month. There's just one small issue, and it's something I thought maybe we could create a product out with. Is it a vibrator? See, when I'm doing my VR sessions, it's easy for someone to sneak up on me because I can't see or hear them. Awkward to say the least. Okay, it's not a vibrator. Well, it could still be a vibrator, <laughs> depending on what they're sneaking up on you with. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> This inspired me to think up a product. A simple vibrating buzzer that attaches to a VR headset so it can be felt even during the most intense sequences. Connecting that to a radio controller, I could place a button outside of my study and Xiaomi could buzz me when she needs me, with no chance of me being caught by surprise. What do you think? I'm sure plenty of other VR enthusiasts might find themselves in similar predicaments and this is a solution inexpensive enough to be an impulse buy. Congrats, David. Note about the radio chip you will be using. Normally, reading X buses causes the microcontroller to block until data becomes available. However, this radio has a non-blocking X bus buffer. The non-blocking buffer will immediately return a value of minus 999 when no data is currently available. Should make it easier. Should make it more that I don't understand what's going on, but okay. So Radio RX is a non-blocking XBUS input connected to a radio receiver. Buzzer is a simple output connected to an electromechanical buzzer. When a data packet is received over the radio, read it and execute the corresponding command in the following table. Okay, so presumably we're taking RX. And if it's 1, then we're going to be powering on. And if it's anything but, we're going to be powering off. Right? Yeah, one... Oh. It's got a picture and everything. Okay. So, 99, that means there's no input coming in. In which case, it's nothing. Then if it's one, then it's on for that second. Or, it looks like it has to go on then off, on then off, on then off. Expected zero, yes. It's going on and off, on and off, on and off until the zero is received. This 
shouldn't be tricky. I'm saying that, but I'm probably going to regret that saying. So what we're going to do, we're going to test equal um, x0 to 1. If it's true, then we're going to move 100 into ACC. ACC. Um, we are going to test equal x0 zero for 0. If it's true, then we're going to move 0 into ACC. Okay. Then we're going to test equal ACC for 100. If it's true, we're going to move 100 to P0 or P1, sorry, um, if it's, or we're always going to constantly move 0 to P0, uh, because we always want the buzzer to turn off again, uh, we're going to sleep for 100, and I meant P1. Okay. This should work. It's not. It's not at all. It's literally not doing anything it's meant to be doing. <laughs> Alright, so we get to here. We then it's it's moving nothing. It's just it's sleeping for 100. That's what I've done. I've I've made it sleep for 100. You idiot. Okay. Well now it's just turning on automatically. So we get to here like we meant to. It tests that, um, and then moves 100 into the ACC. At which point it tests the ACC for 100, and then moves 100 to P1, which is good. At which point it sleeps one, and then moves zero into the P11. Which it was meant to do, but it still cycled all the way back through to the top. So I've investigated labels. You can jump to labels. I think... I think it's giving me an idea how to solve this here. So if we're testing... Um, we're always moving that into, into data. So then if we test data um, to be 1, then instead of going to the next chip, why don't we just um, go and say that um, If it's, if it's true, then we're going to jump... I don't want to go away. Just go away. We're going to jump to on. In which case, the buzzer should be on. Okay. Um, which I think we're just going to have right, right here anyway. So I think if we just, if we just have... Um, move... One to P1, uh, then sleep for one, then move, all oh, this needs to be plused, sleep for one, then move zero to, zero to P1, zero to P1, um, because if we, if we see here, it's moving up and down, like it's always going to be off, and then we're going to get zero. So then if we do that, and we test equal, um, should we just put it as x1? Let's just put it as x0 again, just so I don't get confused with the whole dat and blah, 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 blah. So we just put it as x0 again. We're going to test equal 0 to, or x0 to 0. Um, if that is true, then we're going to want to um, move 0 to P1. If it's false, then we're going to want to jump to on. JMP to on. Uh, we're going to label... This is on, so you just type it, and you can. Do, I do capitals for just readability. 
Um, but we're going to take away this. Okay. And you know what? If it's true, we're going to jump to off. Uh, and then we're going to have off down here. So this is going to be jump to on. Okay. We put a enter there to make it even more readable. So it's on, and then it's going to test to see if it should jump back up to on to carry on doing this. Uh, we are going to put in another sleep one. If it's off, then we're essentially going to want to jump all the way to the top and make sure that it is still off. But we're going to want to, if it's still off, we're going to want to jump down to off. Otherwise, we're going to go through the turning on and off, turning on and off. And if it's off, then it should have already turned off from this, regardless. Part not sleeping. What do you mean, part not sleeping? Oh, between the... Okay. So let's sleep until we get data from x0. How about that? Pa not sleeping! Why? It's sleeping until it gets data from x0. How can we simplify this? So. Other ways to simplify anything but 1 means it's off. So if we test greater than zero, test greater than zero, we will know that it has to be on. Okay, let's, let's get rid of all this. We can remember it if we need it. Uh, let's label this as start. Why not? Go crazy. Um, we're going to test if this is greater than zero. If it is... Uh, that means we're jumping to on. If it's not, that means we're jumping to off. Uh, on, on. We are going to have you move one to P1 and sleep for one. Then move zero to P1 and then probably sleep for one. We then want to make sure that it's off. So we're going to probably do another test. And if it's off, we want to make sure that it's zero. So we're going to test for equals zero. Uh, X zero equals zero. If that is true, then we can jump to off. So if that is true, we are going to jump off. If it's false, we're going to jump on. And then for off, all we need is that it just turns off. But it should be doing that from that anyway, I think. But let's do off, move uh, 0 to P1, and make sure we sleep one at the end here as well, just for, just for funsies. Okay. Son of a diddly. Because it's expecting 100, you knob. Okay. It probably worked the last time too. But it was expecting 100, but we have simplified it a bit more, so that is something. Alright, but it seems to be working now. Thank the heavens. Production cost, rather high. I bet this is probably using the lower chip, or it must be. Power usage is regular, lines of code is a bit many, but whatever. Cool! Return to email. Wonderful, this is exactly as I had imagined. Alright, nice.